welcome to my basement woodworking shop. And what I got down here is my drafting table. And um, let's have a look at that. Get you unhooked here. Okay. So I get rid of that thing. Here we go. Now here's my drafting table here. And uh, I've got, uh, let's get this kind of hooked up here. See if we can get a good view. Well, pretty good view anyway. <laughs> it's kind of tough. I think that'll do it right there. Yeah. Okay. Here's the layout of... Um, my garage machine shop as it is here's the door where you come in and uh, the mill and the cutter grinder are like that okay and then there's the sun and hone in the corner the the more jig bore i have those toolboxes here uh one monarchy doubly here another one here and then the steel bench there now <laughs> What I got to do is move in. Uh, oh, by the way, these are my paper doll machine tools. And here's the radio drill. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Okay, what I got to do is I got to move uh, an Axelson lathe and a radio drill press in here. So I'm going to expand this way. Okay. And I got this set up at six feet, but I might go seven. So, okay, so what I can do is uh, first move that, move these double E's back here for right now, put the mill somewhere like that. We'll get the toolbox and the steel bench out of there. I think the mill's something like that. Uh, and I'm going to get the sun and hone out of there, put the jig board there, and I think uh, I want to put a surface grinder there, I'm thinking. I've got a little surface grinder that's actually down here, a little 6 by 12 Herrick. And, um, okay, so I got that, that, that. I'm going to set the sun and hone over here because i got another plan for that. Okay, at this point, let's get the Axelson lathe in here, and I'm going to put the Axelson right here. And I'm actually going to have a window here I can open in case I have something long i got to stick out the headstock. Okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking about putting uh, one of the double E's right here, and then another one right here. And the mill... We'll have to, I think, something just like that. Then I can get the radial drill here. Just about like that. And I can slide a steel bench either there, maybe kind of like that, or kind of have it out. That'd be a lot better. I can stick the toolboxes here because they're going to be on wheels. Now, I could squeeze the sun and hone here, but I'm actually, th it's really starting to get a little more crowded than I want. So I'm going to add just a little bit out front here, out this way. And I want to put the sun and hone there. And I don't know if you've seen, I have a shop press. Shop press. I'd like to put the shop press covered there. Take this door out, move it out here somewhere, I have the sun and on here, and then I can squeeze that hard-ends chucker lathe, and then my Johnson saw in here, and that's on wheels. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my madness there. So what, I, what I've got um, now um, is a full house. And doing this, it's still going to be a full house, but it'll be for, uh, workable for me. And adding this bit out here, I can have some more work area there.
and I can still bring something in and rotate the radial drill over, move the toolboxes out and drill um, on something uh, heavy that's on the floor that I can bring out, you know, something too heavy. I anticipate a few things like that. So anyway, I, I thought I'd show uh, my planning there. Now, <clears throat> one thing, uh, one advantage to uh, uh, having such a tight shop like that is heating and cooling. Um, the way I got it now with uh, the mill and the cutter grinder, jig bore here, uh, sun and home, Back there, steel bench there, double E is here, and then I got those all the toolboxes like that. Is uh, it's really easy to heat and cool, and I'm going to add a bit more than uh, half more, maybe that much more. So it's going to cost me twice as much. And it's important to keep the machines, especially uh, a jig bore and the grinders uh, and the Monarch e, uh, double E lathes at uh, close to 68 degrees Fahrenheit or they uh, start distorting. So that's the method to the madness. I thought you might like to see an old time um, uh, drafting table. Let's see if I can get this off reasonably. Show it to you. Yeah. Yeah, I got two drafting machines here. This is, uh, and I like the arm type because I can have more of a clutter on the table instead of the, uh, the type with rails. <laughs> yeah, this is a Muta with uh, Vemco scales. And this one here is an antique burning, and uh, it's it's really nice. One only has uh, one one uh, scale on it, but it's really nice for detailing. Just really nice, nice old time setup there. The tables, uh, it's really a clutter in there. I got all kinds of stuff. It's a uh, one of those heavy uh, Italian types, and it's uh, just radically adjustable really easy to adjust. So th this is my last really bad clutter that I'm tr that I'm working on down here. And there's just stuff everywhere. The surface grinders, uh, valve grinders, uh, and this uh, uh, woodworking equipment. Around the corner here. Now the woodworking machines I can have on wheels. And uh, a little scroll saw, those are fun. Here's my sharpening bench. I'll show that off. This is nice stuff here. This was out of a, a commercial meat packing plant, and that's a knife grinder for grinding knives. And man, it's nice for sharpening all kinds of stuff. Here's the Norton multi stones, these are must haves. Got three stones on there. Then I got a gray uh, hard quartz stone there. It's a little bit finer than the translucent white ones. You, know, you just get stuff really, really sharp. I found this, and this is ancient. I think it's out of a. Uh, Oh, an old barber shop, but it's a man-made type stone, and I can't, I think it's just called Corundrum. But that is super fine. You, you can sharpen razors on that. Now back here I've got a 16-inch, uh, about a 1959 Powermatic that came out of a school. It's in just mint condition. And I've got an 8-inch jointer there. That's a Grizzly. I got an 18 inch bandsaw here, it's a jet. It works, this stuff works good. Old, but works. Great stuff. I like those old scroll saws. This is my monster. Uh, it's uh, like a shaper, 
but it's called a spindle molder. It's a it's a Japanese uh, industrial tool from the 1960s. This came out of Boeing. It's just an amazing piece of equipment. It weighs 2,000 pounds. I got it down here in pieces. I have a pretty good way. Good old DeWalt radial arm saw. Watch your fingers. <laughs> that's a that's a Rockwell Delta 1214 saw. I have to kind of hold it down. That, that's a nice saw there. Then over here I got my uh, Powermatic Model 65. That's a 1960 saw that came out of a uh, local college. Okay, I'll get back to you. Thanks for looking.